Okay, welcome back. Now, just the case, I'll turn it around to see the back. If we just zoom in, there's the ATX connection section there, yeah? Yeah, look. Zoom out a tiny little bit. Graphics card, and here's all the ATX stuff sticking off the back of the motherboard. Now, if you remember, this metal plate was in there when you got it, yeah? and it's got all the holes to fit all these bits but they also provide you with one of these if you want that you pop that into the thing sorry you pop that in from the other side first then you fit your motherboard don't bother with it chuck it in fact to be quite honest most of the time especially through the summer the main work machine that you know me and my guys work on in the studio we just leave the side panel off completely like that. You never get any air or overheating problems. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't really add very much to the noise. I mean, what's going to make more of a difference is getting a quiet fan or a quiet power supply. If you want to add a, power, a, a quiet uh, power supply, this bit here, and you want to add a quiet cooling fan, that, you know, the cooler, it's maximum £50 for each. 50 quid for a cooler, absolute tops, you can get good quiet coolers for that price, salmon or whatever and for the power supply again, a, a silent one 50 quid, tops so that's an upgrade you can look at in the future when you've got a spare 100 quid just, just make it more quiet and those components can go with you of course You know, if you upgrade the machine, change the board whatever you, you still use the components ok so here we are we are now ready to connect the graphics card there to the analog socket just make sure it's the right way up like that I might have to be quite firm with that to get it right, in. right. that's connected keyboard and mouse uh, <laughs> now these are grey they're usually colour coordinated uh, green and purple yeah well, I just have to check this because I'm using a switching box. Right, keyboard's the top one. So, that's the keyboard. Which, if I remember rightly, is purple. And that's the mouse. Okay. And now, last of all, power supply lead which uh, comes with the unit I'll bug it out. Let's just zoom out a bit anyway. now some of these power units have got an actual switch this one hasn't which is a shame I like that there you go plug in the power uh, make sure you take off that paper thing yeah and plug in yeah well it's now or never time so let's see what happens. That's the reset switch. You can't even see that, can you? We'll just bring that around. On the case here at the top, we've got a reset power switch, reset switch, LED indicators, power indicators. Lovely solid job this one. <laughs> here we go. So. Ooh. Oh, actually, that's pretty quiet. Did you hear the beep there? It beeped. No multiple beeping, and this you've got to see, man. I mean, look, I did not choose this board, all right? I'm in this case, so don't blame me. Let me just move the box. But look at that. Can you see that? There you go. Mercedes, look, it's got a Mercedes grill and two bloody headlights. Okay, so we have no multiple boots, which means that um, there are no problems. So I'll power it down there. Yeah. Switch over the switching box. And now I just I'll just show you that. Hang on, let me just move the tripod. Yeah. There's the computer, and if we follow that down. That cable's going down to a switching box here. This is the the screen 
and underneath that is mouse and keyboard leads and there are two computers connected to this system and there's another computer connected to that and you, you switch it on the front here. So now when I power it up, we should get power on that screen. Let's see. Yay! We're on! Athlon XP 2400 memory testing. Yay! Let's zoom into that. And there we are. And that's as far as it will go. Okay. Well, I don't know if this is flickering like buggery on the screen when it's, when it's played back, but at this stage, because computer screens flicker. But there's our stuff, look. If you look there, you can see. Zoom in a bit. USB host controller, four of those. Underneath that, ID controller, multimedia device, that's the onboard audio. Network controller, that's the onboard network. ACPI controller, ACPI is obviously uh, on in the BIOS. And the display controller is listed. So there you go. And as you can see further up, there, primary master disk, primary slave, secondary master, secondary slave, all missing. Now the disk drive you notice says that there is a disk drive. It always says that whether you've got one in or not. So don't worry about that, thinking, oh dear, what's going on? Right, let me zoom out. And we can go into the BIOS and have a little look around. Right. Look down the bottom, disk boot failure, insert system disk and press enter. No big deals. Press, let's try the reset switch. Yep, that's working. As it's booting, you hear the beep. And when that comes up, press Dell. And it says down here, prepare to enter setup. And there we are, a standard award BIOS. The CMOS features are the first one up there. That basically just shows you disks and the date and time, the floppy drive, another floppy drive if you've got two, floppy three mode support, don't worry about that. Halt on all but keyboard, leave that. There's your cache memory down the bottom, but that's not something you can option. So it's as it is. The only thing we've got to check now is the date. May the 19th, oop, May the 19th, 2004 is correct. The time though, oh dear, 8 minutes past 11. Right, let me just go and check what the time is. Okay, the time is actually 6 minutes past 4. So, you can scroll from hours, minutes, seconds. Yeah? So we're going to the hours, oops, and uh, enter is select. Oh, well, page up, page down. There we go. Midnight, one, two, three, four, five, ten. We're in the afternoon now. Four. It'll probably be four eight by now actually since I've looked at the computer. Or four seven. But anyway, whatever. If you want to set it absolutely you better dial the speaking clock and do it like that. Okay, so the, the time's right, the date's right. That's all we need to know in that one. So press escape. Now advanced boss features, that's just which device is going to boot and it comes set up floppy first, hard disk next, CD-ROM next. Actually when we install Windows we want to change the order so CD-ROM is first or second and the hard drive is last. Yeah? Escape, come out of that, integrated peripherals, All right, your on board or on chip IDE channels, these are your you know, on IDE channels for your hard drive CD-ROMs. AC97 audio currently is enabled, that's onboard sound. We're going to disable that when we get the um, proper sound card in there because we don't want that. Onboard LAN, um, I'll be using that just to transfer things to this computer, like uh, I'll wire it into the network and then I'll get drive, the latest drivers that are needed and I can port them over really quickly because some of the driver packages for graphics cards are like 20 or 30 or more megabytes sometimes. So it's pointless sort of trying to copy it over. I mean, why, you know, 
if you've got a, if you've got a network card in your other computer that's connected to the internet, use that and transfer stuff over. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to make a little video about how to do that, won't I? Set up a basic network. But anyway, um, that's what I'm going to do. But otherwise, you would disable that. And to do it, page up, page down, disabled, enabled, on board, audio, page up, page down, disabled, right? Uh, you've got USB controllers, they're enabled, but actually I'll probably disable those because the guy's not using USB devices. Keyboard support disabled for the USB. Uh, some manufacturers like to use a US keyboard because that way you can't boot go into the BIOS when the machine boots. So Time and Tiny and companies like that sometimes use a USB keyboard because the keyboard doesn't activate until after the computer's booted into Windows. So you can't press Dell to go into the BIOS, so you can't mess anything up, so they'll get less support calls. <laughs> But they're disabled by standard. Buy a LAN boot ROM? No, we don't want that. And then you've got your ports, blah, blah, blah. Parallel port. Game port address, MIDI port address, blah, blah, blah. Okay, come out of that. Power management setup. ACPI suspend type. USB wake up. Power LED, blinking, soft off button. Power, uh, soft off by power button. Now you've got a choice there. You, that means when you press the off button it'll go off instant off but if you are one of those people that occasionally accidentally presses the button by mistake you can change that to a delay so you've got to hold the button down for four seconds before it'll power off yeah and instant off um, backup function soft off keyboard power up blah 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 these are all things that you know with these modern power saving things let you um, you know, let the computer be booted up by calling in on a modem or touching the keyboard or powering, you know, touching the mouse. Cause you can get everything to sort of power down into a standby state to save money. Now, it sounds stupid, but if you're a company, you've got like 2,000 computers in an office block and they're all running when they're not being used, the power saving like that can save you a hell of a lot on your electricity bill every year. Um, plug and play PCI configuration. So, uh, your PCI 1 to 15 IRQ assignment is set to auto, which means all those IRQs will be automatically assigned. If we, go into, if we press enter, we can assign IRQs, yeah? Uh, 1 to 15, yeah? Lovely. So, leave that on auto. And you've got IRQ assignments for 12 to 14, but you best leave those alone. Because, uh, you don't want to mess with that, trust me. Escape out of that. PC health. Leave all that. Frequency voltage control. Right, this is to do with your your clock control for the speed of the RAM and everything. So if you wanted to clock this machine, you got the host clock control and um, it's disabled. That means you can actually change the frequency manually. If I enable that, you notice this then becomes I can change the frequency of the CPU. Okay, that's if you wanted to clock the machine. Okay, and you can actually type in the number you want there as well if you like. Yeah, but we don't do that. So let's set that to disabled. Leave it all on auto. I mean, trust me, these things just work. Yeah. Uh, right, now we seem to be, I've missed something here, where are we? Oh, that's odd. There's nothing here to say whether you're using plug and play OS or anything like that, so... Uh, well, the last chipset I built was a board was a Gigabyte with a uh, KT400 and that had that option installed and it had the APIC options to have that on or off and the ACPI and things like that. This one doesn't, so they must have sort of said we're not going to bother with that anymore. It must come just set up for XP and XP only, and that's your lot. Uh, yeah, definitely not there. Well, that makes things actually easier. For the old noobs like. Oh well. So, exit without saving. Yes. That's it. So. We have power. Anyway, there we are. There's our 512 of memory, 2400 chip. 
everything seems to be hunky. So the next thing we've got to do, oh that's the CPU clock there by the way, 2000 megahertz, which is correct for a 2.4 Athlon. Um, well it's 2001 I think, but anyway, 2000 Athlon actually runs at a 2 gigahertz Athlon, runs at 1667 megahertz. A 2400 runs at 2 gigahertz or 2000 megahertz exactly. Well there's nothing to adjust in the BIOS, uh, which is kind of good for noobs. So I can definitely recommend this board. Um, apart from changing the drive order when you install the drive, that's that's all we're going to have to do. Um, in fact, we may not even have to do that. So all we've got to do now is uh, power down, connect up our drives, and uh, then we're ready to continue with installing the Windows operating system. <laughs>